Now that we understand transaction analysis and how to actually report journal entries, we get to move on to the second step within our accounting cycle, which is known as posting uh, to the general ledger. And we're going to be learning about T accounts as well in this presentation. So it's uh, the second step, which I've highlighted or which I'm about to highlight right there. And we're going to be moving around all seven steps until we finish this series on the accounting cycle. So let's begin and let's talk about why do we have the general ledger and why do we post to the general ledger. So first off, in the last tutorial we had journal entries and journal entries are just debits and credits and debits and credits listing all of the transactions we have within our fiscal reporting period and we just literally list all of them. But the thing is, if we ever wanted to actually know the balance of a certain account, so let's say if we wanted to know the balance of accounts receivable, uh, that's a B, accounts receivable or cash or accounts payable, we wouldn't be able to uh, we wouldn't be able to attain that certain number because because the journal entries don't provide us with an ending balance of the account. All they provide us with is uh, the actual physical reporting of every single transaction. So the general ledger, the point of the general ledger is to come up with a balance for every single account within your company. And the second part I wanted to cover is what is uh, the general ledger and I've kind of talked about this and the, the, the point of the general ledger is to come up with an ending balance an ending balance in every single account. So all accounts, we're going to have a balance for them. For cash receivables, any liability account, any equity account, we're going to have a balance for every single account uh, that we have within our company. So let's actually look at some transactions and uh, understand how to post them and how to prepare a general ledger. So I've listed three transactions right here. Let me just number them. Number one, number two, and number three. First one is, I've just made a summary over here on the right. If you uh, haven't been familiarized with the debits and credits yet, and you're not really used to reading what a transaction might be. So this is a, a transaction or a journal entry for billing for advertising. The second one is receiving cash in advance for a job that has not been performed. So maybe uh, we received cash for some legal work that we owe to some clients, but we haven't actually performed it yet. And the third, the third transaction has to do with purchasing inventory on account. And notice I said on account and not using cash. That's why we use accounts payable. So let's actually go about performing some. Uh, let's let go about posting some of these entries to their T accounts. So the T accounts are. The reason why they're called T accounts is because they physically look like T's. And the left side is reserved for debit entries and the right side is for credits. And you just got to get used to left always being associated with debits and right always being associated with credits. So what is going to be our first T account? Well, that's what the reference number is for because the reference number is going to show us uh, the order in which we're going to list our, our T accounts. So starting with cash, we're going to put cash at the top and put the reference number, which is one right beside it. And if you're ever wondering why they're listed in this particular order, it's because they list um, the caches and give them a reference number in the order of assets to equity. So they go through all the assets, then they go through all the liabilities, then all the equity accounts. So the first asset account is cash and the reason why cash gets uh, number one is because it is the most liquid asset so we'll go like cash then we'll go receivables which will probably be number two uh, investments might be three and so on so let's actually post these um, these transactions so cash is a debit entry for 2500 so we'll post We'll post $2,500 on the debit side and put a little one next to it to show that that was our first um, cash entry. Because if you look at the previous one, there was no cash um, 
adjustment or there was no entry regarding cash in the first one. So cash, even though it's our second actual transaction entry, it is our first one that has to do with cash. So our second one will be, what's our next reference number? Well, our next reference number is going to be inventory, which is number four, and that's a debit entry for 2000, which will be associated with a one, I should say, because that is the first inventory uh, uh, entry. And then, and then we'll have, what's the next one? Number 12, which is accounts payable. And for this one, we actually have two entries. We have this one here and this one here. So the first will be 300. That's the first accounts payable entry. And then the second one will be 2000. And we just list that there and put a number two because that is the second one, uh, the second entry. You always got to post these in sequential order. Let's do the last two. The last two are unearned revenue, I believe. Unearned revenue. Oh my god, my my writing's horrible. Fifteen. And we're gonna have a credit entry for twenty five hundred, post a little one there. And the final one will be for advertising expense. And that's gonna be a debit entry for three hundred dollars. A little one next to it and we've posted all of our transactions. Now the final part is we just need to summarize the final ending balance and um, since we only have a few entries that we actually posted it's going to be really easy to come up with the final balances so um, we're just going to draw a little line at the end and post $2,500 debit is our ending balance. For inventory it'll be 2000 is our ending balance and you just draw the line on whichever side um, whether the ending balance is a debit or a credit, you just draw the line on uh, that specific side. So since we have more debits, the ending balance is a debit uh, balance, and we'll draw a line on the debit side. Accounts payable is going to be 300 plus 2,000 is 2,300 dollar credit balance as the final uh, ending balance for accounts payable. 2,500 for unearned revenue and 300 for advertising expense and the point of all this is that if we ever want to know the the balance for any specific account we can look at the, the general ledger to actually get the balance for that account so if our manager ask, asks us how much or uh, what is the outstanding balance of all our accounts payable liabilities we can say that we have a uh, $2300 of payables outstanding so that's the point of the, the general ledger. I uh, hope you understood all of the posting, the T accounts, and what the general ledger does. It just encapsulates all of the accounts within uh, your company. So in the next one, we're going to be talking about trial balances. I will see you guys in the next tutorial. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate. You can like us on Facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, Thanks for watching us on YouTube.